I think that on the role of Nahdlatul Ulama, the chief himself, the Honorable Sheikh, will be shedding light in detail. But I will confine myself to the takeaway, the learning that I have achieved and I have got from my interaction with Indonesian scholars, professors, intellectuals, and the high persons of the government, including the former president, Excellency Ajoko Wadodo, with whom I personally met, have the honor to meet, and have a long discussion on Afghanistan. Because he was greatly interested in bridging the gaps between different groups of Afghanistan. And he, all the way from Indonesia, came to Pakistan during the premiership of uh, Shahid Khan Abbasi and then visited Afghanistan in difficult times. And then he saw to it to invite influential scholars of Pakistan and Afghanistan and make them sit with the most influential ulama of Indonesia and chair the session by himself. So this shows the interest of Indonesian people in ensuring and in establishing peace in our region. So we are very grateful to the effort of Indonesian people and Indonesian government and particularly the whole, the back of Nahdlatul Ulama, the most influential Islamic party. It was uh, behind all these efforts because the vice president at that time belonging to Nahdlatul Ulama, Sheikh Amin Maruf, was also all the way in the sessions with the ulama. And great breakthrough was made in religious diplomacy. And then again, the Indonesian delegate, having greatest scholars of Indonesia, Sheikh Zulfa, Sheikh Dar Khotni, who accompanied us while I was representing Pakistan two times to Afghanistan during the Emirate Islami Taliban rule. And our one point agenda was education for women, education for the future generation. Indonesian delegation Roswell role was very crucial because they are role model in female education. They are role model in women's education. And one of the greatest university of women in Indonesia was represented in the delegation by the vice chancellor of the university who welcomed and offered to the Taliban, to the Imarat Islami, that her university is ready to educate the Afghan girls within the abaya, within the Islamic and social norms of Afghanistan. So this was the greatest offer that in the entire delegation, Indonesian Lady Vice Chancellor of the greatest university came forward. The group Nahdatul Ulama has a unique pattern. Contrary to what we have a political activism in Pakistan for the ulama, Indonesia the ulama do not do that. Their area of activism is education, health, welfare works, civic sense, moral upgradation of the people, particularly addressing the youth. So the marked difference that in Pakistan, for example, 
that is the lesson that we are learning and we have learned from indonesia is not mainly focused on legislation but on islamizing the society and i think that nahdatul ulama has made tremendous inroads in this area of activity so the people of indonesia when you meet them when you meet them frankly speaking without exaggeration you will find them true muslims in their attitude in their behavior in their meetings in their household in their ethics in their educational norms and in their health facilities and civic sense but this doesn't mean that they don't influence the governments they do but in an indirect way so they have been their president abdul wahid has been part of the nadatul ulama so there is a great contribution of the nadatul ulama in the indirect better governance of the country the second aspect that i will try to have a few few words on because i think that the most influential person of indonesia is with us in the personality of sheikh ulail abdullah that indonesia has a unique geographical location far away from the mainland of the muslim countries and not part of the conflicts we all are parts of the conflict in afghanistan different national interest colliding in afghanistan of the regional areas then the middle east and the recent yesterday sad event that we are seeing so this geographical location has made indonesia to play a very decisive role in making the ummah united and to come forward for ensuring solution to the conflicts of different countries because all the countries have great confidence in indonesia because indonesia is not part of the conflicts so i can very safely say very safely say although it is a little uh, deviation from allama iqbal's thought who considered that if tehran could be geneva of the muslim world in my opinion and i see say it with all sincerity that in today's situation in today's situation Indonesia can be Jakarta Putrajaya can be the Geneva of the Muslim world with these submissions i once again express my greatest gratitude to the Muslim Institute and to the Indonesian embassy and particularly to the guest of honor our sheikh ulail abdullah and all of you who gathered together for this very enlightening discussion thank you very much indeed